my name's Liz, I'm the baker that sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So I like to talk about all things sewing, so I share fabrics and patterns. Um, I generally talk about what I've been getting up to and I share all of my makes and, and what has been inspiring me in the sewing community. So if that's something that sounds interesting to you, then please do make sure you've hit that subscribe button because you'll get notified of when I bring out my next video. So today is the next episode in my Sunday sewing catch up. So we're on episode nine, which is amazing. Um, I say this at the beginning of all of my um, Sunday sewing catch ups, but I've been really, really enjoying sharing all the little things that I've been getting up to each week. Now, just to say this is going to be the last Sunday sewing catch up for a couple of weeks. I'm going to be taking a break on my YouTube channel um, just for a few weeks so that I can switch off completely um, and spend a couple of weeks with my family. We're off on holiday um, and I'll be back after a couple of weeks with some more videos. I'm hoping to film my July makes vlog before I go away so I can schedule that. So there's one vlog that will be published whilst I'm away, um, but there won't be a Sunday sewing catch up for a couple of weeks. So sorry about that if you've been enjoying um, watching them on a Sunday evening. Um, so yeah, today is going to be a roundup of what I've been getting up to this week. So before I get into my Sunday sewing catch up, I'll let you know what I'm wearing. I am wearing one of my favourite dresses. It's the Tilly and the Buttons Indigo dress made in this gorgeous green leopard print fabric that I got from Material Girl Laura when she was stocking fabrics. She doesn't sell fabric anymore. Um, and this is the indigo that's got the button down back. So if I turn around, you'll be able to see got the button down back detail um, and it's a midi length so it's got this gorgeous floaty skirt on the bottom you can see it stops below my knees and it's got pockets um i love this dress it's floaty and it's just perfect for chucking on um it is raining at the moment we've had some really um sort of autumnal weather in london um but it's still quite warm so this has been the perfect thing to chuck on just with a pair of trainers um, so that's what I'm wearing and I'll pop images in of anything that I talk about if I can't show you properly um, throughout this video. So before I share all of the things that I've been getting up to, I just wanted to let you know that it is actually the summer holidays in the UK at the moment. So we get roughly about six weeks, although for me it's about five and a half weeks this year. Um, so we finished on the 23rd of July and then we go back to school on the 1st of September. So I've got five and a half weeks. Um, of summer break. My husband is a teacher as well so he's at home which is lovely um, and obviously I've got my girls at home too. We are sort of relaxing at the moment because we are off on holiday in a few days time so I've been doing quite a lot of sewing, a lot more than I would usually be able to manage in a week. Um, when I'm teaching I'm lucky if I get one or two things sewn up across the week. Um, but over the last couple of days, I've been doing lots of sewing in the evening. So once we've been out for the day, come back, the girls have some chill out time where they read a book or they watch a movie. Um, and that means that I can sneak off and go and do some sewing. So I just wanted to say that because it means that I've been sewing a lot more than I would normally be able to fit in a normal week. So what have I been sewing? I've shared quite a few of these things over on my Instagram. Um, I am at the baker that sews over on Instagram if you don't follow me already because I share quite often things that I've been getting up to before I share them in my vlogs. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was the spring dress. Um, so I've got the dress here and I've got the pattern. I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail because I normally sh save that for like my um, makes videos and I've just published my June makes video if you haven't seen that already and I've got my July makes video to film. Um, but I'll just show you the pattern. I'll talk about the sizes because I know that's really useful to, to find out. And I'll show you the dress that I ended up with. But I am thrilled with how it's turned out. So this is the pattern. It's a beautiful dress. There's two different skirt options, which I'll talk about in a second. And it's by a company called So Love Patterns, who were new to me, but I saw this gorgeous dress over on Instagram. So it prompted me to check them out. They've got their own size range, so it's called A to H, and I'll talk about that in a second. And it's described as an intermediate sewing pattern. And I would say it probably is an intermediate sewing pattern um, because there are a few fiddly aspects to sewing up the dress. Um, so these are the line drawings. So you've got the option to do this sort of fairly straight skirt. I think it's described as an A-line skirt with a slit up the front, and that's what it looks like at the back. And then you've got the option for a gathered skirt. Now, normally I would go for a gathered skirt. I love that kind of um, sort of fit on me. But for this dress, I actually went for this skirt and I am really delighted with how it's turned out. 
Um, so it says the spring dress is a beautiful romantic dress inspired by the spring jumpsuit, which I didn't realise there's a jumpsuit. I'll pop an image in of what that looks like. Version one has got big three quarter length sleeves that gather into an elastic cuff and can be pushed up to the elbow, as well as a flared midi skirt with a front split. Version two has a short puff sleeve and a gathered skirt and both feature the spring bodice, which has, it's got this gorgeous V-neck and then it gathers at the bust and there's a beautiful curved waistband there. This waistband feature is really pretty. And then, yeah, you've got the sort of gathers at the bust and the sleeves are gorgeous. I absolutely love the sleeves. So in terms of their sizes, it starts at a size A and goes up to a size H. So for a bust measurement for an A, it's 31.5 inch bust, 24 inch waist and 33 and a half inch hip. And then for a H, it's 44.5 inch bust, 38 inch waist and 47.5 inch hip. So it's not very size inclusive, but hopefully they will extend their size range. And the size guide corresponds to a UK 6 to 20, European 32 to 46 and a US 2 to 16. In terms of fabrics, they recommend medium weight woven fabric like cotton, linen, viscose, cupro, crepe and rayon. Now for my size measurements, I went off my bust measurement and my waist measurement because it's fairly fitted in that sort of area. It's fitted across the bust and it's fitted in the waist. There's a side zip as well, just to say. Um, so I went with their size C um, because my bust measurement is 34 inches. My waist is 27 inch fluctuates. My hip measurement is 37 and a half inches. So I went with a C and I actually ended up having to take out. I'll show you on the dress in a second where the V comes down here. I ended up with lots of gaping on this part here on the dress. So I ended up having to take an inch off each side of the, the front bodice. Um, so I had some fabric that I bought from Minerva, this gorgeous strawberry print cotton poplin. It's really lightweight for a cotton poplin. Um, it hasn't got a huge amount of drape because it's a poplin, but it is really, really light, light, lightweight. So I would say it's, a, it's on the lighter side of a um, cotton fabric. So I just absolutely loved that print. It's on a yellow background, which is unusual. You don't often, well, I don't often come across fabrics that have got yellow background and all these gorgeous strawberries all over it. So this is the version that I came up with. So I've got this gorgeous V here. It does fit better when it's on. It's just gaping there at the moment. So I'm not going to pop it on, but this is my version. And what I found was this section here was really gapy. So I basted it into, this is the front bodice here. And then you sort of attach the, the waistband here. It's a really busy print, so I can't really show you properly. If I get the line drawings again. So what you do is you attach the front bodice to this waistband. And what I found was when I did that, this aspect of the dress was really gapy. I had quite a lot sticking out. So I ended up taking an inch out of this section here for the front, both sides. So I ended up removing two inches in total and now it fits much better across the bust. The waist, it fits really nicely. There's a little bit of room, which I really like, but it fits me really nicely. And on the back, it fits really nicely too. I love the sleeves. I think the sleeves are absolutely gorgeous. They're so voluminous and you get this gorgeous sort of poofy detail. And there's some really pretty features about this dress. I really love that V-neck. It's not a neckline that I sew very often for myself, but I really liked that. And I really like this waist, this curved waistband because it sort of cups this area here and it creates really nice shaping. Um, and then the skirt, it's quite straightforward, um, sort of A-line type skirt. And then you've got that split at the bottom too. So I'm really delighted with this dress. I will pop an image in so you can see what I look like wearing it. Um, and yeah, I had to play around with the fit. So I did just baste it first, tested it out because I didn't want any gaping and I wanted to make sure that it fitted across the bust because I think if it didn't fit really well across the bust, it wouldn't have looked great on me. Um, so I'm really pleased that I played around with the fitting of that dress. So that's the first thing that I got sewn up this week. And that was a really enjoyable pattern. It was a new pattern to me. And I'm really enjoying trying some new patterns and sort of pushing myself out of my comfort zone. Because um, what I find quite often is if I find a pattern that fits me really well and I really like it, then I'll sew quite a few of those patterns. Um, but it's been nice to try out some new patterns this week. Which brings me on to the next make that I got sewn up. So it's another dress pattern. 
Um, and this time it's by Helen's Closet and it's the Reynolds dress. So this is the pattern. So it's a dress pattern. You can either do this long version, the short version which stops at your knee or a top version. And I sewed up this version. I love Helen's closet patterns. They really hold your hand and the instructions are impeccable. And there's lots of fantastic details as well. Here are some more line drawings just to show you. So we've got the top, we've got the knee length dress and then we've got the full length dress. Um, so the Reynolds top and dress is your go-to summer garment. Throw on this simple sundress and you'll be instantly in the mood for relaxing in the garden um, or a cold drink by the pool. Pair the Reynolds top with high-waisted bottoms or layer the dress over a simple knit tee. The Reynolds features wide shoulder straps, bust darts, inseam pockets and a side slit with mitered corners at the hem. It's a pull-on over the head design with shaping in the back, uh, sorry, with shaping in the side and back seams. And the top of the garment is finished with top stitching. So there is quite a lot of top stitching with this. In terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend light to medium weight wovens with no stretch, like a linen, a cotton lawn, poplin voile, seersucker shirting, double gauze or crinkle cotton, tensile twill silk and rayon viscose chalice or a poplin will work well. Structured fabric like a crisp cotton lawn will have a more dramatic volume and drapier fabrics like a rayon chalice will have a more fluid movement. They've got two um, cup sizes. So they've got a B cup size range, which is zero to 22. And then they've got a D cup size range, 12 to 34. Um, so for a size zero, which is a B cup size range, it's a high bust measurement, 29 inches, full bust measurement, 31 inches, waist measurement, 24 inches, and hip measurement, 33 inches. And then for a D cup, 34, it's a 58 inch high bust measurement, 62 inch full bust measurement, 52 inch waist measurement and 62 inch hip measurement and it's drafted for somebody that's five foot six so i went for the maxi version and i used this gorgeous cotton poplin fabric that came in a so hilly jane box i'm just going to hold it up now i don't often go for really dark fabrics if you followed me for a while you'll know that i love anything bright and colorful so when i tried this on I think there's a couple of reasons why I was a bit unsure about it. So I tried it on, got some photos taken and looking back at the photos, I was just really hesitant about this design on my body. I normally go for um, really gathered skirts or um, dresses that have got, you know, quite a lot of drape like this indigo dress or tears. I love a maxi. So I was quite excited about trying this pattern. But when I put it on, I was a little bit hesitant. I think it's one of those dress patterns that over time I will come to love it. I got loads of lovely comments over on Instagram. So thank you to anybody that did um, comment on the dress over on Instagram. I'll put images in so you can see what I look like wearing it. Um, I think it's a combination of a different design to what I'm used to wearing and also a darker fabric. So I normally go for something quite bright. Um, and this is obviously a dark blue background. I love that pattern. It's got boats and anchors and it's just really cute. I love this, this fabric. It came in a Sir Hilly Jane box and I was really excited about sewing it up. So I think it is a combination of the design of the dress being different to what I'm used to um, and just the, the darkness of the fabric, I guess. Um, but I'm going to take it on holiday with me and hopefully wearing it on holiday, I'll come to just really enjoy having this dress. Um, it's meant to be quite loose fitting as well and I'm quite used to things that come in at the waist and if I've got a dress that is quite floaty sometimes I'll put waist ties in so that I've got that option to bring it in at the waist and with this dress there just was no option for that. Um, the neckline is also something quite different to what I'm used to. I quite often have necklines like this whereas this neckline is slightly lower and it's a straight neckline as well. So I think there's a couple of things that I just need to get used to with the design of this dress. It's got lovely thick straps, so it means that it hides your bra, so you can wear a bra with it. Um, and then, yeah, it's got darts at the, the front, bust darts, and then the back, you it's cut on the, um, as two separate pieces, and then you stitch them together, and then you've got this lovely top stitching. You're not going to be able to see it, but you've got top stitching all the way down, which is lovely. And then you've got the side slit, side slit detail on both sides of the skirt. So there are some really gorgeous features with this dress. I'm really delighted um, with the finish, even though I'm a little bit hesitant about how it looks on me. I'm going to try this pattern with a more drapey fabric and see if um, using a different fabric helps me with liking how it looks on me. Um, but I'm going to I'm still going to wear this. Like I said, I'm going to take it on holiday and hopefully I will learn to love the dress on myself. 
Um, but yeah, it was a really enjoyable sew. Helen's Closet Patterns, if you haven't come across them, the instructions are impeccable, really straightforward to follow, so I would highly recommend it. And I've seen so many beautiful versions of this dress already. So I think it's a pattern that I'm going to learn to love once I get over the fact that it's very different to my usual style. So the next thing that I've been sewing looks like I've been really productive because I've got a massive pile of them in front of me, but four of these were almost finished. I just needed to hem them. Um, and if you've watched my Sunday sewing catch up vlogs, my previous ones, you'll know that I was putting off hemming these and I've no idea why. Um, so I wanted to just make some t-shirts. Um, I've got a couple of skirts and culottes and dungarees, which I just need t-shirts um, that I can chuck on underneath or match with them. Um, and I have got the book, the Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book. And in here is the Tabitha t-shirt pattern, um, which I absolutely love. It's just a really simple, um, quite straightforward t-shirt to sew up. Doesn't really take a huge amount of time to sew up. Um, so this is what it looks like. It says that it takes half an hour to cut them out and an hour and a half to sew them up, but I can definitely sew one of these up in less time. It usually takes me about an hour to sew it up. So these are the line drawings. So you've got short sleeves, three quarter length sleeves, and then full length sleeves. And then it's got a neckband. And it's just a really simple, quite loose fitting t-shirt. Um, so I'd sewn up four of them, two of them using the See You at Six um, sweatshirting fabric that I got from Simi Sunshine. So this is the first one. I have worn this, which is why the sleeves are inside out. That's the first one. And then this is the second one. And I love these fabrics. They're See You at Six, which are absolutely gorgeous. And for these ones, I used matching ribbing for the neck band. And then I added a hem band on because I only had half a metre of this fabric. Um, so I managed to squeeze the t-shirt out, but it's slightly cropped. So it's got the hem band at the bottom as well. Um, and then I sewed up two t-shirts using this fabric from Hey So Sister. So it's, a, I think it's a loop back jersey. So it's slightly thicker than a cotton jersey. So I think these t-shirts are going to be perfect for the autumn winter because they are slightly heavier weight t-shirts. So that one and then this one. And I just needed a couple of plain t-shirts and I just loved these two colours. So they were completely sewn up apart from needing to hem the sleeve and hem the bottom. So I have finally hemmed them both. Um, of the plain ones and then the see you at six um, I've hemmed the sleeve that's all I needed to do was hem the sleeve I don't know why it took me so long but I have finally hemmed them and then I have sewn a couple of t-shirts for myself and then also for my girls I think I'm missing a t-shirt um, I'll show you the ones that I've got my lap and then I've got one t-shirt that I'm definitely missing um, so I was very kindly sent some fabric from First The Fabrics, um, this amazing rainbow print fabric. So it's grey background with all these gorgeous clouds and love hearts that are like rainbow colours and then these gorgeous giant rainbows all over it. And I've made matching t-shirts for myself and my daughter Ruby. So I used the Tabitha t-shirt pattern and I just made the, the smallest size for Ruby um, because she is now five foot three she's definitely catching me up I'm five foot five and a half um so it's nice that I'm actually able to use a lot of the patterns that I've got for myself now for her and just use the smallest size um so we've got matching t-shirts which I'm very excited about they're both exactly the same I've just used the smallest size for Ruby um, and then the next size up for myself and then I got some of this fabric from Eliza Mac Fabrics um, and these are for school. So this is um, an elephant print fabric. I just love all those different characters all over it. And I got this fabric because it reminds me of the story Elma, um, which is a story that we read a lot when I'm at school. So I'm looking forward to wearing that to school. And then this one, I just love rainbows, which is why um, I went for this fabric. So it's a navy background. And I know that navy blue really suits me. And it's got all these gorgeous rainbows all over it. So I've just made myself a simple t-shirt that I can chuck on with my skirts or shorts or culottes um, and under my dungaree dresses too. And then I made a t-shirt for my youngest daughter using some Hungry Caterpillar fabrics. I'm just going to grab it because I haven't picked it up. And then this is the t-shirt that I've sewn up for my youngest daughter. So it's got Hungry Caterpillars all over it. I absolutely love it. She chose this fabric. Um, how cute is that? It's got all these gorgeous little Hungry Caterpillars all over it. 
um, and then it's got all the different stripes as well. Um, and again, I just used the uh, tap of the t-shirt pattern and just graded it down for her and it fits her really nicely. So it's really great actually. I'm really enjoying being able to use some of the patterns that I've already got and just adjusting them um, to fit my girls. Um, so yeah, they were really straightforward. I batch cut them and then batch sewed them on my overlocker and then just jumped onto my sewing machine um, to do the hemming and the top stitching around the neckband. And I just changed the thread for the different t-shirts. Um, so it looks like I've sewn loads and loads and loads of t-shirts, but four of them were almost pretty much done. I just needed to hem them. Um, and I always put off those final stages. I've no idea why, because it literally took me 10 minutes to hem the four t-shirts that I'd already had sewn up. Um, oh, and then the last thing that I've sewn up this week, which I am so excited about and I'm thrilled with how it's turned out, is my denim jacket. So I shared this, I think, in my last Sunday sewing catch up and I was asking for opinions about whether I should insert the fringing just on the back or on the sleeves as well. So I'm going to pop it on so you can see what it looks like. But I am so happy with how this um, denim jacket has turned out. Ta-da! So as you can see, I went for full on fringing on the sleeve. Um, which I am thrilled about. And then if I turn around, you can see what the fringing looks like at the back. So there it is. I absolutely love it. I think it's so fun. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's something, to be honest, I'm going to take it off so I can show you. It's something that I probably wouldn't have bought in the shops. Um, but we were at a festival a few weeks ago and I saw a lady wearing a jacket that had fringing on. And I just instantly felt inspired to make my own. And that is one thing that I absolutely love about sewing. I love seeing something and just knowing that hopefully I can figure it out and make that myself. Um, and I think learning to sew for me has definitely pushed me out of my comfort zone in terms of what I wear. And my style now is so different to what I was like five years ago, um, which is when I couldn't sew. So prior to being able to sew, I would wear black and blue all the time. Um, I had my favourite pair of trousers, I didn't really wear dresses um, and I had certain clothes that I would wear to work and certain clothes that I would wear at home. Quite often I'd just chuck on a pair of jeans and a t-shirt and I wouldn't wear what I wear now. Um, and I just absolutely love how creative I can be with my clothes now because I can sew. And I love how it's injected lots of colour into my wardrobe and I'm just a lot more daring with what I wear. and. Clothes, I love how the clothes just make me feel. Um, wearing this jacket, I went for lunch uh, with a friend and I popped this on and it just made me smile knowing those cute little details that I'd, I'd included in this denim jacket that, you know, when I reach out to grab something, you get that fringing detail that's just, you know, going to sort of blow in the wind or whatever. And, you know, when somebody sees the back of my jacket, they'll see that lovely fringing detail. Um, it just made me smile and I love how sewing really makes me feel great about myself. So this is the denim jacket. It is the um, Sew Over It Sorrento denim jacket, which is part of their e-book, Summer Dreaming e-book. I've made this pattern. I think this is my fourth denim jacket. Yeah, is it my fourth? Yeah, fourth denim jacket. I love the pattern. Um, the instructions are written really well considering it's an e-book. Because sometimes with e-books, you find that the instructions are quite limited because they've only got a certain amount of space that they can fill. But you get really clear images and the instructions just really hold your hand throughout. There's lots of pattern pieces for this denim jacket, um, but the instructions are written brilliantly and they really hold your hand. And there's lots of tutorials to help you if you need any help with it. I found it a really enjoyable sew. So I bought some denim from Felicity Fabrics and I just wanted some um, traditional dark blue denim. This has got stretch in, so the Sorrento jacket in the ebook um, doesn't ask for stretch denim, but I found it fine sewing this denim jacket up with um, a stretch denim. One thing to say with the pattern, if you've got it or you're considering making it, is I have found on all of my versions that if you use the pattern piece to cut the waistband, it comes up far too small. I've ended up adding about four inches onto the waistband pattern piece. That's just a word of warning if you are going to sew it up. I don't know if anyone else has found that sewing up the Sorrento jacket, but I've always had to add extra um, sort of fabric onto the waistband. Um, so I'm just really mindful of that now and I've drafted a new pattern piece so that I can make sure that the, the waistband fits. So um, it's quite a straightforward um, traditional denim jacket. So you've got the pockets on the front 
um, got the buttons all the way down. It's got tabs on the back waistband and then you've got the um, slit on the sleeve with the button. Um, it's got the collar as usual. Um, so what I did differently, I've just got a thread, was when I was attaching the yoke to the main part of the denim jacket, I just sandwiched some of this lovely fringing in between. So I don't know if you can see if I lift it up, it's just sandwiched between those two pieces. And then I've top stitched along there as they recommend. What I decided with this jacket was I just went with navy top stitching because I wanted the fringing to be the thing that stood out. I didn't want the top stitching to be the thing that stood out. So I just went for um, top stitching that matched the color of the denim jacket. And then on the sleeve, I've just inserted fringing. It's just a one piece sleeve. So before I attached the sleeve, uh, yeah, before I attached the sleeve and before I sewed up the sleeve along here, I just inserted the fringing first and then sandwiched it between the sleeve. Um, and I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. I think it's a really fun addition to what would be just a standard denim jacket. And then that's the fringing on the back. And I just love that swishiness of the fringing and the swishiness of the fringing on the sleeve too. I just think it's really fun. And then with the pocket facing i'm just going to show you might not be able to see it but hopefully you can i've just used a fat quarter from a so Haley jane um box which again i know it's there and it adds a peep of color but nobody else will know that that's there and then with the binding on the sleeve you'll be able to see that there's a little pop of color too where i've used the same fat quarter um for the binding and you just get a tiny little glimpse of that on the opening of the sleeve um, but yeah, I'm really thrilled with this jacket. I think it is going to go with quite a lot of things. And I wore it out to lunch where, with this dress yesterday. Um, and yeah, it was just really fun lifting up my arms and seeing that fringing and having that fringing on the back too. So I'm really pleased with it. Um, I'm delighted with how it's turned out actually. And I'll make sure I pop pictures in so you can see. And I've got a little video of me uh, where I swish my back so you can see the fringing. And then I lift my arms up as well so you can see it too. Um, I love having an idea and being able to make it a reality using the patterns that we've already got. Um, this amazing, amazing fringing is from the new craft house and I think they've got some left. They've got it in bright orange, which I was tempted to buy, but I went with the green because I feel like that's more, it's more of a wearable garment and it'll go with a lot more in my wardrobe. So thank you to everybody that encouraged me to insert it into the sleeves too. So that is everything that I've been sewing this week. Um, I've got some fabric to share with you next. So I've only got little off cuts of this fabric. So I've already started sewing it up and that is what I'm hoping to get sewn up next week before we go away. So I've got a couple of pieces of fabric that I got from Simi Sunshine and then I've got a couple of pieces of fabric that my girls have chosen and we just got it from a local um, fabric shop near us. So I've only got snippets of this fabric. So like I said, I've already started cutting it out, but these are swimwear fabrics. So they've got some amazing swimwear fabrics over on Semi Sunshine. This is the first one that's got all these gorgeous flowers all over it. And it's on a black background. And this is swimwear fabric. So you can see it's got stretch, but it's got really good recovery as well. And I'm going to turn this into the Sandpiper Swimsuit by Helen's Closet. And then I couldn't resist this one because of all the bright colours. But this is like neon fabric. And I just absolutely love it. I'm quite tempted to go back and get some of this to turn it into some leggings. Because I think this would make amazing leggings as well. Um, but again, yeah, it's got really good stretch. But really good recovery as you would hope for a swimwear fabric. I just love those colours. They remind me of highlighter pens. And I just think all those patterns and things are gorgeous too. So that is going to become a sandpiper swimsuit set for myself as well. Um, and then my girls, I took them to the fabric shop so that they could choose some fabrics. Uh, my daughter loves um, cosplaying. So she's asked me to sew something for her, which I'll talk about at the end of this um, video. But I let them choose some fabrics so that I could make them both a swimsuit too. So Lola, my youngest, loves tigers. She's loved tigers like from the moment she even realized tigers existed she chose this amazing fabric again it's swimwear fabric um, and i'm going to make her a little bikini set like with a, a crop top type top and bottoms and i'm using the sandpiper swimsuit and i'm trying to grade that down to fit her and then ruby chose this amazing sort of geometric print fabric i just love all of the colors in that too 
and I love that print. Um, and again, I'm using the Sandpiper swimsuit for her and I'm just going to use the smallest size that that comes in. So I've got the pattern here just so I can talk you through it. So it's a pattern by Helen's Closet. Um, it's a swimsuit set. Here's the pictures for you. Um, so it's called the Sandpiper um, swimsuit. It's aimed at advanced beginners and it comes in sizes um, US 0 to 34. So I have got the sizes here. So in terms of sizes, for a size zero, it's a high bust measurement, 29 inches, full bust measurement, 31 inches, under bust measurement, 27 inches, waist measurement, 24 inches, and hip measurement, 33 inches. And then for others, also two cup sizes. So B cup size range, zero to 22, and then a D cup size range, 12 to 34. So for a size 34, that's in the D cup size range, it's a 58 inch high bust measurement, 62 inch full bust measurement, 56 inch under bust measurement, 52 inch waist measurement and 62 inch hip measurement. In terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend swimwear stretch knits with at least 50% stretch horizontally and vertically. Look for nylon or polyester knits with high spandex content. And you might want to look for chlorine resistant fabrics for swimming pools and or fabrics with a UPF rating over 30 for sun safety. The Sandpiper Swimsuit is the ultimate sporty two-piece for swimming, water sports and fun in the sun. You can choose high-waisted or low-rise bottoms and mix and match them with the Sandpiper Swimsuit. View A features a band finish on the top and bottoms and View B features a wider band on the, on the top and an elastic finish on the bottom. The neck, arm and leg openings are all finished with swimwear elastic. It's a quick make and it's a great option for people who are sewing their first ever swimsuit. And I would say it definitely is great for someone that wants to have a go at sewing swimwear and they haven't sewn swimwear yet. So here are the line drawings. So for myself, I'm going to sew view B, which has got the wide band on the top and then the bottoms are finished with elastic. And then for my girls, if I can hack it and grade it down for them, I'm going to sew this version with the band on the top and the band on the bottoms. So I'm really excited about getting this sewn up and fingers crossed I can get it sewn up before we go away. So it'd be really great to be able to take some um, swimsuits that I've made, not just for myself, but for my girls. So that is one thing that I'm going to be working on this week. Um, and I'm hoping that I'll be able to get them sewn up and finished, fingers crossed. Um, I also got the swimwear elastic from Sumi Sunshine. And one thing to say about the swimwear elastic is what I found, I ordered some, let me grab it so I can show you. So I've ordered some of the prim swimwear elastic that comes like this, but I've realised it's the wrong width um, because they recommend six millimetre wide swimwear elastic. And what I've also found with the prim swimwear elastic is it's really, it's quite difficult to stretch. It feels quite... Um, quite tight, quite resistant when you're pulling it, which I know you need with swimwear elastic. But the swimwear elastic that I got from Semi Sunshine, I'll put a picture in because I can't remember what the name of it is, but it's the correct width and it also just feels like a softer swimwear elastic. So I'm going to go with the one that I got from Semi Sunshine and I've actually ordered more of it because that comes on a five meter, it come, I think you get five meters of it and I'm worried I'm going to run out because I'm making a couple of swimsuits for myself and then one each for my girls. So I've ordered some more because it just feels like a softer, I guess gentler swimwear elastic. This feels like when it's sewn in, it's going to dig in and I don't want that from a swimsuit and I don't want that for my girls either. So I just thought I'd let you know that that's what I found with the prim swimwear elastic. It feels quite tight and it doesn't feel like it will be gentle on your skin. Whereas the one that Semi Sunshine stock um, feels definitely a lot softer and there's a lot more give with the swimwear elastic. So I just thought I'd let you know that that's what I found. So the next fabric that I wanted to share with you was some beautiful fabric that I have got from Felicity Fabrics. As always, it comes in their gorgeous little box wrapped up in their tissue paper. And then you also, something I love, you get a lovely swatch. So I got a swatch for my denim and then you get a swatch for the other fabric that you've got. So just thinking about the denim, it was 97% cotton and 3% spandex, 135 centimetres wide and it was £12 per metre. Um, and then with this fabric, it's a cotton needle punch and I absolutely love it. The the needle punch is like 3D. It, it, I don't know if you can see that, but it's raised off the fabric. And then it's just on a cotton background, 100% cotton. It's 130 centimetres wide and this was £14 per metre. I just love that design. I think it's really fun. Um, I love 
the um the little needle punch dots are all different colours. Um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Ombre. Ombre, is that the word that I'm looking for? But yeah, I love all those different colours. I love that sort of it's got a texture to it as well and they're raised. So I think I'm going to use this to make a blouse. Um, I only got a metre of this, so I'm going to use it to make a blouse, but I'm just not sure what blouse. I don't want to break up that print too much. Um, so if anyone's got any suggestions of a blouse that they think this would work for, and I've only got a metre of this fabric. Um, but yeah, I just absolutely loved it. As soon as they released it, I fell in love with this, and then I resisted. Um, and then I was buying the denim and I thought, no, actually, I need to get some of that fabric. And then if I show you what the back looks like, um, so you've got all the um, sort of the stitching from the needle punch of the little dots that are all over it. I just thought it was really fun and it's quite a different fabric. It's not something that I've got in my stash. Um, and I think this is going to be something for the autumn. So I've got a while to decide what I'd like to turn it into. Um, but yeah, please let me know your thoughts on what you think this would look really nice as um, in the comments below. I'd love to get your thoughts on what I can turn that into. So the next thing I wanted to share with you was a new fabric shop. Now my fabrics haven't actually arrived yet, but in my next Sunday sewing catch up, I'll be able to share what the fabrics are like. Um, but it's a fabric shop that I became aware of because I won a prize um, as part of the Sew so 70s um, sort of competition that's going on over on Instagram at the moment, which is being run by Hey So Georgie and Blossom Sandwich. Um, and I'll link all of that information down below so you can go and check it out. I think it's running for August and then it will be stopping. Um, but we're encouraged to sew with either 70s patterns or 70s fabric and then share that over on Instagram. And you've got a chance to win some amazing prizes. Um, and I was um, chosen as one of the winners for July and I got a £25 gift voucher for the Sewist Fabric Shop. Now, they are a fabric shop that I probably wouldn't normally have shopped at because they are described as the home of plain dressmaking fabrics. And if you followed me for a while, you know that I don't really tend to go for plain fabrics. Having said that, I know that there is a gap in my wardrobe for some plain garments. Like I've sewn up the plain T-shirts because I know that they'll go with some of my jazzier things. Um, and I do need to sew up a few pairs of, um, well, I'd like to sew up a few pairs of plain clots. So I had to look on their website because I got this lovely voucher um, and I've chosen a couple of plain fabrics. I've ordered a viscose and then some jersey fabric. I'm really excited about it arriving. I think I've ordered a linen, a viscose linen as well. I can't quite remember, but I'll share in my next Sunday sewing catch up so you can see what the fabrics look like. Their website was really straightforward. Um, there's options on there to either go and look at stretch fabrics or woven fabrics. They've also got a remnant section. Um, and I think from memory, they've got a haberdashery section too. The website was really easy to navigate. And then for postage, it was three pounds for shipping, which I thought was quite reasonable. Um, so, oh, and their fabrics are sold in half metres. And I think it's something like £3.50 per half metre, which I thought was really reasonable. So I just thought I'd give them a mention um, and I'll do a bit more of a review once my fabrics have arrived in my next Sunday sewing catch up. So I can let you know what the quality of the fabric is like too. But if you like shopping for plain fabrics um, at reasonable prices, I'd definitely go and give them a little follow over on Instagram and check out their website. So they are called the Sewist Fabric Shop. Then I've got some earrings to share with you actually. Um, so if you have watched my videos before or you've seen pictures of me over on Instagram, you'll know that I had some heart shaped um, sort of drop earrings and I got them from a place called Sapphire Frills. Did I just get rid of their card? Yes, I did. Um, so here they are. They're over on Instagram um, and they're called Sapphire Frills and they've got a website which is sapphirefrills.com. They sell gorgeous earrings. Um, I think they've got necklaces and bracelets as well, um, but predominantly they sell earrings. And I, um, I think somebody else must have shared them. And I had a look and I found some gorgeous love heart shaped drop earrings. And I used to wear them all the time. Um, and then sadly at work, one of them fell out and I couldn't find it anywhere. So I stopped wearing them. Um, so that prompted me to go back on their website and find some more earrings. So I had a look and I've actually gone for earrings that aren't drop earrings, but they've got a back on them because I feel like they'll be safer with me. And I don't know if you'll be able to see, but these, I'm going to have to take it out. These are little cat earrings, which I just fell in love with. I don't know if you're going to be able to see them, but they're just a, a cat. They're really cute. So they're sort of a, a whitish background and then they've got like metallic 
um, sort of print in them. They're really cute. And then I also ordered some seashell um, earrings just because I really loved them. So I'll show you what they look like too. So there they are. I think they were like £8 for the earrings, which I think is really reasonable. Um, I love the detail on there and you get that lovely little sort of metallic. You can just about see the metallic detail in there. And these are like pastel coloured. So there's um, like mint green, lilac and pink. Um, so just sort of let you know. They come in a gorgeous little box like this. You get some little sweeties um, and then just some little um, sort of packaging. There's bubble wrap and then you get their business card too. And they're really reasonably priced and they're a small business, which is one of the reasons why I'm giving them a shout out because I love supporting small businesses. So they're called Sapphire Frills. So I'll link them down below if you want to go and check them out. Um, but yeah, speedy service and they've got some gorgeous earrings over on their website. Um, so what else did I want to share? Oh, the next thing I wanted to share was a podcast, which has just been released. So it's a new podcast and it's called Check Your Thread. And it's by Zoe Edwards, who is the founder of the um, Me Made May Challenge. So, 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 so blog she is over on Instagram. Um, and the idea behind the podcast is about sewing more sustainably. So she's going to be sharing like her top tips. Um, suggestions for sewing more sustainably and um, things that she does to ensure that her sewing is sustainable and then I think she's planning to have lots of guests over on there too so she's released the first one which is an introduction to the podcast and I've really enjoyed listening to it and I'm really looking forward to hearing more um, sort of episodes through the podcast I love listening to podcasts when I'm sewing I also love watching sewing vloggers too when I'm sewing so I do currently listen to the uncut podcast um, and then I also listen to the new craft house. They've got a podcast um, and I love listening to anything that's sewing related whilst I'm crafting too, because you feel like you've got your sewing friends in the room with you. So it's great to have a new podcast to listen to. Um, so just sort of let you know about that in case you haven't heard of it either. I'll link details down below so you can go and check it out if it's something that you enjoy listening to as well. So I thought I'd finish by sharing what my plans are for next week. So I've got a week until we go on holiday. So I'm planning to finish the swimsuits for myself and my girls and hopefully I'll get those finished before we go away. And then I'm also working on a very bright sundress. So I'm using this amazing fabric that I got from Abercorn Fabrics. I am a fabric ambassador for them. So this fabric was given to me so that I could make it into whatever I want to and then I'll share images over on Instagram. I just love how bright that fabric is and I'm using this pattern, the Tilly and the Buttons um, sky dress pattern and I'm going to be using it to make the knee length dress and I am going to add the cute ties on the shoulders too. So that is pretty much sewn up. I just need to do the bias binding. If I hold it up, yeah, it's pretty much constructed and I just need to do the bias binding around the neckline and the armholes um and then hem it um so that shouldn't take too long it'll just be the bias binding that takes a while um and then i've got a suit that i'm making for ruby so my eldest daughter loves cosplay so cosplay i think correct me if i'm wrong is dressing up as characters or uh, so it might be characters from books characters from films or tv shows um, or it might be somebody that really inspires them. So there's a YouTuber, I think, that she watches um, and she would like me to make her a suit. She wanted me to make her a suit for ages. Um, so we went fabric shopping and she just wants it in black. I've just got some black suiting fabric and I'm going to use two patterns that I've already got. So I'm going to use the Sew Over It Cocoa jacket just to make a fitted sort of cropped jacket, but I might add a couple of inches onto it for her. Um, and then I'm also going to use the Tilly and the Button Sophia trousers from the Make It Simple book, which is here. So it's this pattern, but instead of doing the dungarees, I'm just going to make the collots for her. And the reason I'm using those patterns is, um, number one, the jacket is quite similar to the style that she wants. And then with the trousers, they've got a flat fronted waistband, but I can put elastic in the back. So it means that I can adjust them if she grows. Well, she will grow, but it means that I can adjust the size for her. And then I'm also going to put pockets in. Um, so that is something that I'm going to make a start on next week. I might not get it finished, but I'm definitely going to make a start on that for her. And then the final thing that I'm hoping to get sewn up 
is a shirt for my husband and I'm going to be using a McCall's pattern which I've had in my stash for ages which is the McCall's M6044 so it's a men's shirt pattern um, and I am going to be sewing up view A because he wants a shirt for going on holiday and I'm going to be using this fabric um, that I've had in my stash for ages so let me hold it up um, and I think it's the perfect fabric for going on holiday I feel like it's quite bright and jazzy um, and he'll definitely wear it when we're away I'm not sure if he'd wear it when we get home um, but we'll see it's a navy background it's a viscose fabric so it's really lightweight as well um, so I'm hoping that I can get this sewn up I mean they're quite ambitious plans so we'll see if I actually manage to get them sewn up um, but this is um, it looks like quite a straightforward pattern actually um, let me know if you've sewn this up. So it's the McCall's M6044. I've sewn a couple of shirts for him, so I'm hoping that I'll be able to tackle this and get that version sewn up. So quite a few plans before we go on holiday, um, but then I'm really looking forward to a couple of weeks of really switching off. Um, I'm considering actually taking my knitting with me because I'm still persevering with trying to teach myself to knit. So I'm thinking maybe in the evenings, once my girls are asleep, I might be able to sit and just persevere with teaching myself um, to knit. Um, and I'm hoping also to listen to lots and lots of books whilst I'm on holiday too. So if you've got any book suggestions, let me know in the um, comments below too. That was a bumper roundup of all the things that I've been getting up to this week. I hope you enjoyed listening to all of my sewing that I've been doing this week, but also my plans for next week. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Um, I'll be back in a couple of weeks with another Sunday sewing catch up, but I am going to switch off for a couple of weeks. Um, so I will see you all soon. Take care. Bye.